Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Ruskies and Reads. This is going to be the third video in the bookshelf series that I'm doing where I take you through all of the books that I own one shelf at a time so it's not like your standard bookshelf tour where I go through my entire book collection at once just like showing the books to you, saying the title of the author and so on. However, that really is going to be the case with this video. So all of my TBR books are actually here on this half bookcase so I definitely have way less TBR books than would typically fit like on a full bookcase and because of that I didn't want to do just like a shelf by shelf tour of these especially since I can't really speak very thoroughly or intelligently about these books because I haven't read them yet. Do I know a little bit about them? Sure but not enough to make like a full video of each and every shelf on this bookcase since they are smaller than a standard bookcase shelf. So today for this TBR tour we are going to go through the entire half bookcase and I'm going to show you the books one by one, tell the title and the author. I don't think I'm going to be saying much more about them just because if I did we would be here for a very very long time. Now I would say that my TBR collection is very small compared to a lot of people because I've worked very hard to keep it that way. In fact my physical TBR was probably around 30 or less than that because I've been working so diligently the past couple of years to narrow it down. It was over a few hundred at one point and I've just been working so hard to read the books that I have and be very mindful about the books that I bring in and I am still doing that. I don't want to have a super large physical TBR because I don't want books potentially sitting on my shelves that I may lose interest in. So I want to keep my physical TBR fresh and I feel like the only way to do that is to keep it very small which is why I only have this half bookcase here dedicated to TBR books. Now at this time this is now overflowing because I did um, a pretty big haul in November and it was actually able to fill up this case and then some and so now I'm back to the point where I need to maybe curb it back a little bit and start reading some of these books but we are going to talk about all of the physical books on my TBR on this half bookcase right here and they are in no particular order I'm just going to hold them up probably not say very many things about them unless something in particular sticks out that I did want to mention and so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it. The Wife by Alifair Burke. Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. This is one of the 23 and 23 books that I definitely plan to prioritize in 2023 to finish out this series. In Holidays by Christina Lauren. This was actually part of the recent Try a Chapter holiday edition that I did so if you are interested in seeing some of my thoughts on the very first chapter, I will be sure to leave it up in the cards for you. The Orphan's Tale by Pam Jenoff. The Martian by Andy Weir. Andy Weir is definitely an author I need to prioritize in 2023, especially since I have this book. I've heard amazing things about this. This is a science fiction and I need to go ahead and get to it since I have it on my shelves. When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. We Keep the Dead Close by Becky Cooper. This is a true crime novel that follows a murder that happened at Harvard and I am psyched to get into this one. A Blizzard of Polar Bears by Alice Henderson. This is the second book following A Solitude of Wolverines, which is one of my favorite wintry isolation thrillers. I'm hyped to go ahead and continue in this series. When We Were Bright and Beautiful by Julian Madoff. I believe this is like a family drama, maybe wealthy people behaving badly. Not entirely sure, but I am excited to get into it nonetheless. Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. This is her very first adult novel. It is, it sounds like it's going to be very atmospheric, very magical. I just love the vibes that this cover is giving me. I really enjoy Fable by Adrienne Young and so I'm excited to see what she does with an adult novel. The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. I don't know terribly much about this story but I do know that this is going to satisfy a reading challenge prompt which is the whole reason why I picked it up. So we're going to see if I actually like it because Emma Donahue has never been an author that has really been on my radar. So if you have read this please let me know what you thought. Who is Maud Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. This is a thriller that Audrey from Chapter and Converse really really enjoyed. I don't know terribly much about it but I was reading the synopsis and it sounded great. So again another one that I'm hyped to get into. I mean let's be real y'all. I'm pretty hyped to get into most of these. The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. When I read the description of this this sounded like it was a little bit maybe like dark academia mixed with dark magic. It sounded very atmospheric as well. So I've never read anything by Katie Hayes. This might be her debut. I'm not entirely sure but I'm excited to give this one a try. The It Girl by Ruth Ware. This is another part of my 23 and 23. I'm pretty good about keeping up with new releases from Ruth Ware. She typically writes very character driven suspense thrillers. I get Agatha Christie vibes from her. I definitely need to go ahead and get this so I'm ready for when she releases her next book. Signal Fires by Danny Shapiro. Danny Shapiro is really known for writing about family secrets. She actually hosts a podcast called Family Secrets and wrote her own memoir about the family secrets that she has had to deal with. This is a fictional story but again it's probably going to surround family secrets and I'm down for it. Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. I read Razorblade Tears earlier this year and it was fantastic. It is definitely one of the top books that I've read in 2022. 
It was dark, disturbing, grim, gruesome. It was a tale of revenge. And because I loved it so much, I will now probably read anything else that S.A. Cosby writes. I really hope that I enjoyed this one a lot. Maybe not as much as Razorblade Tears, but I am definitely, definitely looking forward to this one. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. She is an author that I need to try in 2023 because she's been on and off my radar for many years and I'm finally taking the plunge. I finally have one of her books on my physical TBR. I think I'm going to prioritize this in January because it is a book club pick. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this one. This is like a character driven story that follows a friendship over 30 years. That sounds like exactly the story that I would love to read. And so we're going to do it. We're going to read Gabrielle Zevin in 2023. The Family Game by Katherine Stedman. This is a suspense thriller that I picked up from Book of the Month. I typically primarily get mystery thrillers from Book of the Month. They have a lot of really fantastic recommendations. Never read anything by Katherine Stedman before. So if you have, please let me know what you think. But this one sounded fantastic. Family secrets and lies and all of that good stuff, which I'm totally here for. The Plot by John Honth Korolev. I believe this follows a professor who actually steals the plot of one of his former students books that was supposed to be like a major hit but I think the student died before he could publish it and now the professor sees it as his chance to finally be a published novelist but somebody knows what he did and is now like out for revenge or blackmail or something like that. I think this might actually be adapted soon so I want to get to it so that I could eventually watch the adaptation. This sounds fantastic. I don't think I've ever heard of a book quite like this before and I'm interested to see where it goes. Wild Women by Ruth Emmy Lang. This is another book well first of all stunning cover. It's giving me very atmospheric magical vibes. I do know that this is like a magical realism story about two sisters who do have some kind of magical abilities. I think one can see other people's memories and the other can kind of see in the future she has some psychic abilities and it's about their search for their mother who went missing and they believe that she is still alive. Never read anything by this author. I was absolutely drawn in by the cover. I'm not mad about it. I'm excited to go ahead and see what this is about. The Last House on the Street by Diane Chamberlain. I don't need to know anything about this. I've read two books by Diane Chamberlain and I've loved both of them. She writes historical fictions typically with two different timelines, one in like the past and one in the present. I have a feeling that's exactly what this is going to be and I'm hyped for it. She is quickly becoming one of my favorite historical fiction authors. Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. She's another author that I need to read in 2023. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this story for the most part. I think Abby Jimenez writes rom-coms. She might also include like harder hitting elements into her stories. I don't exactly know but this has been getting such high praise that I was finally convinced to add Abby Jimenez to my TBR and so this will be the first one of hers that I read. And she does have a new release coming out in 2023 so be on the lookout for that if you are already a fan of hers. Every Last Fear by Alex Finley. He is another author I definitely need to read in 2023 to determine if he is an author for me. This is one of his current releases that sounds the most interesting to me so I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. He is definitely a suspense thriller writer and so I've heard a lot of great things about him from Audrey from Chapter and Converse and he does also have a new release coming out in 2023. Merry Little Meet Cute by Julia Murphy and Sierra Simone. This is one of those books that I'm reading as part of the Try a Chapter series that I'm doing for Bookmas. This is going to follow a plus size adult film star as she is kind of hired to star in this Hallmark-esque Christmas movie which is absolutely very different from everything that she's ever done before and I think it's going to be her love story following for the lead of the person that's going to be starring in the movie with her. I read the prologue of this because it was like pretty long and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. A Very Merry Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the fifth book in the Bromance Book Club series where you're following a bunch of men who are part of this book club where they read romance books in an effort to like understand women a little bit better, understand what they want, try to see the world a little bit differently than through the lens that they're kind of taught to see the world through for their whole lives. I've only read the first book in the series so far but I decided to go ahead and pick this up because it is holiday related and I wanted it for that Try a Chapter series. This you'll see more of my thoughts on in the upcoming vlog that I'm doing but I really enjoyed the first chapter of this as well. Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead by El Casamano. I actually just finished Finley Donovan is killing it in the month of December. Really really enjoyed it. So excited to see where this one goes because the first book left off on kind of a fun little cliffhanger. Finley Donovan follows a woman who is actually a struggling writer and when she's discussing her newest suspense novel with her agent she is mistaken for a contract killer and it follows the shenanigans she gets into after being mistaken for a contract killer. And I am absolutely hyped to get into this. I'm so glad that I ended up picking this up on Book Outlet. I wasn't sure if I should because I hadn't yet read Finley Donovan is Killing It, but glad that I have this now. You Were There Too by Colleen Oakley. Colleen Oakley is probably one of the most anticipated authors I'm excited to try in 2023. I just love the synopses of all of her books. They just sound so different, so unique. Following plots that I've never actually heard from before, this follows two people, two strangers who are actually dreaming about each other. They don't really realize that they are real until they run into each other one day and it kind of goes from there. That sounds beautiful. I don't really know like what the point of the book is, like where they're ultimately meant to get to or why they're dreaming about each other, but I think that's the whole reason to read the book, right? So super excited about this one. 
Taylor Jenkins Reid after I do. She's one of my all-time favorite authors. This is one of her backlist contemporaries. So she has, I think, about four backlist contemporary novels that she published before she started getting into these historical fictions that are very, very popular, like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones and the Six, things like that. And I have only read one. I read True Loves and I really, really enjoyed that. That was so well done for a love triangle. It was beautiful. It was realistic. It was exactly, I think, what you would want from a love triangle type story if you read one. I believe this follows a couple who are struggling in their marriage and they decide to take a year apart and to see if like they can find their way back to each other and that that just sounds beautiful I don't think I've ever read a book that really covers that and I'm interested to see what these people do when they're apart and if they determine that maybe they shouldn't there after all like I said Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favorite authors I will read literally anything that she writes if she wants to send me her grocery list I'm sure that that's well done as well so super glad to have this one. The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. This is another one that I did for the Christmas Try a Chapter series and it was okay the first chapter. In fact this is probably my least favorite so far but it basically follows a woman whose family does this like elaborate Christmas game every single Christmas and she was not planning on going. She hasn't really been back to that house in a really long time since her mother died there but her aunt is telling her that if she goes, if she participates in the game, she's going to find out what actually happened to her mother. I just found myself like really confused after the first chapter. I didn't understand like what the whole game was about and why her aunt couldn't just give her the answers without her having to jump through all of these hoops. But you know, my curiosity is piqued. That's probably why I would read it if nothing else. So I'm going to keep it for now and we'll see if I get to it. Christmas by the Book by Anne-Marie Ryan. This is another one that I did for the holiday edition try a chapter that is already currently up on my channel. I absolutely loved the vibes of this. This is following a couple who own a small bookshop in a um, British village and it's very, very much struggling. In the very first chapter, you're following one of the main characters, the wife, and I believe it alternates between the wife and the husband and you're following her. You know, she's running the bookstore on a normal day. The people that come in and the coziness and it was just exactly the vibes that you kind of want. So this is definitely up there as a top priority like holiday book. If I'm able to fit it in this Christmas, I don't know. This Christmas is totally getting away from me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read any of these, but I will absolutely keep them for next year. Surviving Savannah by Patty Callahan. This is one that caught my eye on Book Outlet. It is probably one of the only ones from a Book Outlet haul that I'd never actually heard of before, but the cover intrigued me. It's, it felt like very historical fiction-y, and it is. This is following a steamship in the 1800s that sank. It was kind of considered the Titanic of the South, and it follows that story, and I'm really interested because Titanic is a huge buzzword for me, and so when I heard that, I was like, yep, add to cart. We're going to do it. If you tell by Greg Olson. This is a true crime novel by Greg Olson. He also writes fiction. I recently read the first in his Nicole Foster series. Well, I think it's a duology and I'm going to complete that in 2023. I want to see what he is able to do with true crime because this sounds really interesting. It sounds like it's going to follow a very evil mother type figure. So hyped to get into this one. The Quarry Girls by Jess Lurie. This is a suspense thriller. Jess Lurie is like a new to me author. I recently read Unspeakable Things by her, which I didn't really, really love. So I'm going into this hesitantly, but I've heard amazing things about it. And so I'm willing to give her another shot. Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover, again, is one of my favorite authors of all time. I don't care what she writes. I'm going to read this. This was sent to me as part of the monthly Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of, and I was so psyched to see it. So happy to have another Colleen Hoover on my shelves. The Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley. This was put on my radar years ago on Instagram when one of my followers said that this is like one of her favorite books of all time, and it's one that she recommends to everybody. And it's just been kind of sitting on my virtual TBR on my wish list. And I was like, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. And I saw it on Book Outlet because it sounded really sweet. It follows this lonely, eccentric artist artist who's kind of like given up on humanity and he writes down about his life and his feelings and stuff in this green notebook and he leaves it in a coffee shop and then the owner of the coffee shop finds it and starts adding to it and then she leaves it somewhere and it continues and I think eventually all of the people who write in the notebook end up kind of converging together and it just sounds really sweet and touching and I want to hear more about the message inside of this one. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This is another one that is definitely a big priority in 2023. This has kind of been blowing up in the online bookish community. I think it features a second chance romance. Carly Fortune has a new release coming out in 2023 and so I want to read this so that I know whether I can go ahead and add the new release onto my TBR as well. Next I have Maybe Not by Colleen Hoover. I actually got this quite a long time ago from that same Facebook gifting group but it's just been on my TBR because I think this is like a sequel novella or maybe it's a prequel novella to Maybe Someday but I feel like I need to read Maybe Someday before this one and so this has just been kind of sitting there and then luckily somebody else sent me Maybe Someday so now I can actually read this eventually. Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. I read Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. It was like a harder hitting romance. I assume that's what this one's going to be as well. As long as I enjoy it as much as Archer's Voice I think Mia Sheridan might become a go-to romance author for me. Secrets of a Charmed Life by Susan Meisner. Susan Meisner is another author that is quickly becoming a go-to historical fiction author for me. I recently just 
read A Bridge Across the Ocean and enjoyed that one immensely, even more than I thought that I was going to. I already had this one on my TBR, oddly enough, and so I'm excited to get to this. This one has actually also been recommended to me already by one of my YouTube subscribers, and so that really makes me even more excited to get to this one. And are we surprised? I have another Colleen Hoover. Confess, like I said, this is Colleen Hoover. I will read absolutely everything that she writes. For the most part, she primarily writes contemporaries with harder hitting elements. I find that a lot of her books do cover a lot of really sensitive and tough topics. Some of them can be very raw and emotional and I love that. It really makes me emotionally connected to the story and the characters. So I'm absolutely hyped to get to this one. I think this is the one that's been on my TBR like one of the longest. Definitely on my virtual TBR the longest so I, I just flip the need to get to it already. Then I have The One Who Loves You by Pippa Grant. I was briefly subscribed to Colleen Hoover's The Bookworm Box. It is a bookish subscription service that she has. It sounds like it's going to be a fun, probably steamy romantic comedy and I'm willing to give this a shot. I've never heard of this author before but since it was sent to me in the box I definitely want to go ahead and give it a try. The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. I have like every C.J. Tudor book on my virtual TBR. This is one that I actually physically own obviously as I'm holding it here for you but I need to go ahead and read this and give her a shot because I need to know if she's an author for me. She typically writes horror suspense type novels novels and I've heard a lot of really great things about her and I definitely just need to give this a shot. Next I have American Fire by Monica Hesse. This is a true crime and I believe it follows a series of arsons that was happening in Virginia and it's true crime. I'm always down to find amazing true crime so if you have recommendations please leave them down below. I would love to get your recommendations. 12 Sharp by Janet Ivanovich. I'm obviously very behind in this series. I think it's up to like 28 at this point now. I'm very much taking my time with these stories. This follows Stephanie Plum who is kind of like an accidental bounty hunter and they're just a good fun time. There's something that I read like if I really need a palate cleanser something that's not going to take a lot of mind space and I just read these when I need to read them. I'm absolutely in no hurry to continue with the series and I'm just willing to let it go on for the rest of my life if absolutely necessary. It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. Yes, I have several physical TBR books by Colleen Hoover. This is the second book in her Ends With Us duology. I read It Ends With Us a few weeks ago and enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite by her, but it was still a very important story following domestic abuse. And this follows um, another character that we follow aside from the main couple in It Ends With Us. And I'm excited to see more from his perspective. The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. Megan Miranda is a suspense thriller author that I keep going back to time and time again, even though she is very, very hit or miss for me and none of her novels ever like blow my mind or anything. But they're always a pretty good reading experience no matter how memorable they are. So when I saw this on Book Outlet I decided to go ahead and grab it. Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. Lisa Jewell I discovered this year. I've read three or four of her books already this year and she is quickly becoming like a staple suspense thriller author for me. I've really enjoyed all of the books that I've read and I trust her completely so excited to have this one. Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. This actually follows middle-aged assassins who are kind of being put out to pasture. Nobody really appreciates their methods anymore and so they're kind of sent on like this glorious retirement cruise but then they really that they are being targeted and they kind of realize pretty quickly that it's their own company that has targeted them and so it's about a fight for their lives and I am hyped. This sounds absolutely amazing. Little Do We Know by Tamara Ireland Stone. She wrote Every Last Word which I haven't read in years. Like I read it I think back in 2017 but it's still in my mind as like one of the top hard-hitting YA contemporaries that I've ever read. This is another YA contemporary that is really following a fractured friendship. I hope that I love this as much as I did Every Last Word. I'm a little bit nervous because I am moving away from YA but like I said I do want to read more from her because I love that book so much and if I do really enjoy this I'm willing to continue with Tamara Ireland Stone's YA in the future. All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. I'm not going to say anything else. The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturbe. This is a historical fiction that has been on my physical TBR for quite a while now. I need to go ahead and get to it but I have to be like an emotionally right place to read historical fiction especially set in concentration camps. This has made the unhull cut many many times even though like I'm never pulled to read it so I, I think I need to go ahead and prioritize this in 2023. Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the first book in the spin-off series that kind of follows the same world as her Curse Breakers trilogy. I do plan on finishing that trilogy in 2023 so that I can be ready to start this series. The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. Claire McIntosh is also another kind of staple suspense thriller author for me at this point. I've only read two of her other stories but I did enjoy them and so I snagged this when I saw it on Book of the Month. It is a story about a man who kind of winds up dead at his own New Year's Eve party and about the detective that is investigating his murder and I guess it takes place in this small town where she kind of knows everybody so there's a lot of emotions wrapped up in her investigation. I don't really need to know anything more than that. I'm excited to see what Claire McIntosh does with a piece of detective action fiction. I don't think the other two were the same so I'm definitely excited to see what she does with this. House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. Y'all know that this is definitely a top priority for me in 2023. I loved House of Earth and Blood so very much and I need to go ahead and just get this chonky boy done so that I'm ready for her next release in this series. 
I also have Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash, which are the final two books in Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass series. This is another one that I'm kind of taking my time with. I have been reading Throne of Glass for several years and just occasionally, maybe like once a year, I will pick up one of these books. Not necessarily in any hurry to finish this. I know that this is a completed series. I don't really have to worry about catching up. So these are going to hang out for a little while and I will get to them eventually for sure. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, another top priority book for 2023 as the sequel to this is coming out in 2023. This is a dark academia book that features Gale and secret societies and I also believe maybe a little bit of magic. This is an adult book by Lee Bardugo. I think it's her first adult book. I've only ever read her YA series so I'm excited to see what she's able to do with this one. This is Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I read A Sorcery of Thorns by her a few weeks ago and actually really enjoyed it. It's YA fantasy and this one is as well and I'm excited to go ahead and see what she does with this. I also have Hamilton the Revolution by Lin-Manuel Miranda and Jeremy McCarter. This is basically like an in-depth look about the Hamilton Broadway musical which I am now obsessed with now that I've seen it. Loved it so much. I'm definitely way behind on the hype train for this one but this is like a look at Lin-Manuel Miranda's like process and how he created the play and the lyrics and the music which were phenomenal and so I am excited to dive into this at some point because I would love all of that behind the scenes insight into this play. Then I have Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. Y'all know that I am desperate to finish this series in 2023. Well, nervous to finish, but desperate as well. I love this series. It follows Mia Corvier, who is a badass assassin in all of the trials and tribulations she faces. I just love her. I love Mr. Kindly, her shadow cat. I also love Bastard the Horse, who is not a speaking animal character, but is sassy nonetheless. So this is one that I'm absolutely making a priority in 2023 as well. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. This is a fantasy novel. I don't know basically anything about the plot, but I do know that this seems to be a well-loved Loved fantasy series here on booktube and I've never read anything by Samantha Shannon before so I want to go ahead and give this one a shot to see what I think about it. I have A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. Again this is one that I definitely will be completing in 2023. The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. This is the second book in her Atlas 6 series, another one that I plan to continue in 2023. I hope that I like this one a little bit more than I like the Atlas 6. The Atlas 6 was a little bit of a letdown for me. It wasn't the dark academia vibes that I was looking for, so we'll see how this one does. Then I have The City of Dusk by Tara Sim. This is one that I received when I was subscribed to the adult version of the Fairy Loot book only subscription service. It's beautiful, it's got sprayed edges, and I decided to keep this one because it sounded really interesting. So this is one that I will get to at some point. Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the second book in her Kingdom of the Wicked series. This is another one that I have on my radar for 2023 because I wanted to go ahead and get caught up because the third one has either just released or will be releasing soon and then it will be a completed trilogy. And I have this beautiful fairy loot edition of Kingdom of the Cursed. Kingdom of the Feared will be coming to me in this edition as well and I need to go ahead and get on with it. Then I have the illustrated edition of A Clash of Kings by George R.R. R. Martin. This is the second book in his Game of Thrones series. I did read Game of Thrones, gosh I think it's been two years now. I buddy read that with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. I enjoyed it overall but these are very thick tedious stories. I'm sure that you are aware if you have read them or you have watched the show there is a lot of detail. There is a lot going on. I really have to be in a mind space to read this. I don't know if I will ever be in a mind space to read this again but I'm gonna hang on to it just in case. Reading the first book was exactly like watching the first season of the show and I feel like that really really helped me. I know that the show definitely goes into a different direction than the books but it helps me understand the book a lot more. I think if I had just read the first book before watching the show I would have been a lot more lost which I know is probably kind of unusual but I'm hoping that the experience with Game of Thrones the show will help me with this and like I said I'm going to go ahead and keep this on my shelves for now hoping that I get to it eventually. Then I have The Phantom Prince by Elizabeth Kendall. This is another true crime story that actually follows the longtime girlfriend of Ted Bundy as she shares her side of the story. I'm excited to go ahead and get to this. It's not very long. It's short. There are pictures in here. I really want her take on what this kind of trauma would have done to her life. To find out that she was in love with a man who was a very prolific serial killer, one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. So that's why I have this one. You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen M. McManus. This is kind of a make or break for me for Karen M. McManus. I've read One of Us is Lying by her. I've also read two others of her standalones. And for the most part, I think that she's a pretty good suspense thriller writer in the YA age range. But the problem is, is that now that I'm moving away from YA, her books just don't appeal to me as much. But I've enjoyed her books so much in the past. So when I saw this on Book Outlet, I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot. And if it doesn't do anything for me, I'm just going to walk away. No harm, no foul. But I did want to give this a shot. Keeper of the Lost City 
Ladies by Shannon Messenger. So this is actually a middle grade series that I've heard quite a lot about recently and wanted to go ahead and see if I enjoy it. I'm not really a middle grade reader at all, but I've heard such high praise about this. And it seems like it's going to be a middle grade fantasy that I can really sink my teeth into. This is not a small book and there are I think like nine or 10 books out in this series already. So if I do enjoy this, this is another one that I can kind of get lost in and keep on my TBR for however long it takes me to read the series. One that I recently hauled when I did the Authentic Books box unboxing, The Rewind by Alison Lynn Scotch. This follows two exes who haven't really seen each other since college when they broke up very contentiously and now they are both going back to their New England campus for the wedding of a mutual friend and they just want to try to avoid each other. They both have very successful separate lives and then the next day, I think it's like on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, they wake up in the same bed together, they have rings on their fingers and they have no idea what happened. This sounds like the perfect New Year's type story. I would really like to get to this but I don't know if I will be able to acquire an audiobook for it in time but this is definitely like a soon to be read if absolutely possible. Then I have Make You Mine This Christmas by Lizzie Huxley Jones. This was actually sent to me in the recent Illumicrate Afterlight box so it's got the special edition sprayed edges. All I know is that this is a sapphic romance. I believe it follows a woman who is fake dating this guy and then all of a sudden she starts to fall for that guy's sister. So this is another one I would really like to get to in December if absolutely possible but finding an audiobook for it has been difficult as well so we'll see. Nevermore The Trials of Morgan Crow. This is actually on my December TBR. Another middle grade series that I've heard amazing things about and want to give a shot because if it gives me the same kind of vibes that everybody says that it's going to I think I'm really going to enjoy it and so we'll see. Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, another one that is on my December TBR. So hopefully very soon these will no longer be on my to be read list. These will be on my read list but from what I understand this is an isolationist thriller that is set on this tidal coastal island where everybody in this one family, Daisy Darker's family, is reuniting for Nana's 80th birthday and then Nana ends up dead and it goes from there. I'm here for it. And then really quickly, I just want to run through the remaining holiday reads that I have on my list to do as a try a chapter series for Bookmas if I can. It has been alarmingly difficult for me to have like 10 minutes to sit down and read the first chapter of a book. So I'm failing miserably at it right now. I've only done one vlog and I've only read the first chapter of one book for the next vlog. So we'll see. But these are technically also on my TBR because I do plan on reading them eventually over maybe several holiday seasons, who knows, but these are technically on my TBR. The Christmas Scissors by Sarah Morgan, 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayliss, A Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly, 8 Perfect Hours by Leah Lewis, The Christmas Wish by Lindsay Elk, The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer, One Last Gift by Emily Stone, and Once Upon a December by Amy E. Reichert. I actually have read the first chapter of this already as well and really enjoyed this. This follows a magical Christmas market and I am so intrigued by that concept. This is definitely high up there as some of the favorites in terms of the triad chapters that I've done. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are currently all of the books on my physical TBR. I do have a very small haul coming at the end of December, which will add a couple more onto this TBR list. But for the most part, this is what I have on my physical TBR. And this is probably what's going to remain on my physical TBR for the time being in terms of I don't plan on adding a lot to it. I do try to read any books that come into me as quickly as possible. So like book of the month books or the Facebook gifting book or other bookish subscription books. I really want to try to read those as soon as possible. So I'm hoping that this won't grow too much, especially since I'm now out of space. If you have read any of the books that are on my physical TBR and you think that there are some that I should prioritize, please let me know. Please also let me know how many books are on your physical TBR. Do you find yourself being overwhelmed by a large physical TBR or no, you're just happy collecting books and keeping them on your shelf? Or do you find that you lose interest in the books on your TBR after a certain amount of time? I would love to know. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.